earned a promotion to detective. And the article goes on to cite many other instances where the same officer killed plenty of other people in years past. And this is in a city of just over 100,000 people. They have killed twice as many people there as in San Francisco and Oakland combined in 2012. So obviously there is an issue there um, in that city with that police department. But the DA's office has again and again announced that they've found justified in using deadly force. One after the other, they're finding this, that they're always justified. Um, the same officer has has been in trouble. The city had to pay out like a hundred uh, six figure dollar amount to a suspect that was beaten up by Kenny while he was handcuffed. Another pending suit, he's accused of choking a suspect during a routine traffic stop. So here, this is just one police officer that's getting promoted when all of this stuff is going on. He's still out there patrolling the streets. Again, he has a license to kill, no accountability. Meanwhile, what we're hearing from the Department of Justice and Obama's administration is that we've got to protect the police. And the way we're going to do that, protect them from all these domestic terrorists out there, is by banning ammunition. The latest is that they're wanting to ban a popular form of rifle ammunition because they say that it could potentially pierce through protective armor. Now, the ATF did drop that proposed ammo ban today due to public outcry. So kudos to all of you for that. You definitely let your voice be heard. Um, I do believe that Jakari Jackson is going to have an even more in-depth report on this because he's got his own ideas about what's going on here. But, you know, that's just one instance where it's, you know, we need to protect the police with all the citizens out there. Now we have another law coming out of Mississippi it's being proposed to let police enter homes without a warrant and they can shoot your dogs. But it's just one specific breed of dogs right now, pit bulls. So if you have a pit bull, cops can come in your home without a warrant and shoot this dog if they feel threatened. Because if you don't have your dog tied up or in a cage in your own home and a cop busts in the door, then they're wanting to put forth a law that allows the cop to shoot the dog if he feels threatened. And of course, I have a chihuahua <laughs> and my chihuahua is going to charge at anyone who busts in my door. So of course, the cops are going to shoot these pit bulls. Of course, here we have a Fourth Amendment. Clearly, it doesn't mean anything about, you know, when you're in your home here with enjoying your pet, man's best friend. And so people are going to say, oh, well, you know, I don't have a pit bull and I hate when people let their dogs run loose, so I don't care you know, this should be allowed, or I don't have anything to hide, so I don't care if they take people to secret torture prisons in Chicago. I don't I don't care if that's going on because I'm not doing anything wrong, so why should I care about that? Why should I go join the protest? Well, two men here have reported that they were at a Chicago deli, just minding their own business, at a Chicago deli, when a group of masked men burst in and kidnapped them along with three others, and now these masked men turned out to be the police and they took them all to the secret detention warehouse known as Holman Square. John Vergara, Jose Garcia, and the deli manager uh, and two others, they were detained for about nine hours, denied access to a phone call, a lawyer, or any form of due process. The men report that during their incarceration, police tried to get them to falsely confess to crimes for hours until one of these incarcerated men name dropped a really good Chicago attorney and then they were released on the condition that they never speak of what happened at Holman Square. So of course they did not. They probably kept quiet to get themselves out of that secret torture prison, but clearly they are now speaking up and coming forward. But the point is you too can be kidnapped by the Chicago police they can secretly interrogate you in their secret torture prisons. And, you know, this is all just because you decided to get a cup of coffee at the wrong deli. Now, our own uh, Joe Biggs, he was at that protest there at Holman Square, and he has more. 
Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com with another update about Homan Square. Now, Josh Owens and I went up there about a week and a half ago, and we did some reporting about the atrocities that have happened up there, the people being detained, not being able to call a lawyer, uh, basically not given any kind of due process, and then essentially released over maybe an 18-hour period to up to three days. We've heard about uh, many of the victims that have been taken there have been essentially, they felt like they were kidnapped. These officers come storming in and uh, no-knock raids. They uh, don't wear any kind of uniforms or anything like that. Usually uh, all blacked out, um, no name tags, something like that, unmarked vehicles, and essentially go and grab these people and take them and hold them in this facility. Uh, One lady recalls that when she was taken in there, the guy said, you're going to get a tour of hell. And another few gentlemen said they were uh, punched in the face while their arms were shackled. One man talking about the point that uh, an officer stepped down on his testicles and started moving his foot around like he was uh, trying to put out a cigarette. So there's a lot of atrocities that are happening at this home and square, and there's now a new person who has come forward, and in an article by the Free Thought Project, um, his name is Jose Gonzalez, and he claims that police threatened to inject him with heroin to get him to talk. Now, this guy uh, said he was sitting around at his home with his family in a no-knock raid uh, style. They came busting through the uh, door. They said they had a warrant. Um, They wouldn't allow Jose to look at this warrant. They pushed his pregnant cousin to the ground, and then they pointed their assault rifles at the kids and grandmother who were in the house. This is the kind of thuggery that happens from time to time with these no-knock raids. So Jose was taken into custody, and no drugs are found at the home whatsoever. Uh, they they take him to Home and Square, and they keep asking him about all these narcotic deals, all this uh, all this drug um, business th- business that's going on in the area. And he says he has no idea about any of that whatsoever. And uh, turns out that uh, the Jose Gonzalez that they were looking for, because that is a pretty common name, was born in the 1960s. This Jose Gonzalez that they grabbed was only 27 years old. So. Obviously, they had the wrong person. He said that the officers definitely wanted it to seem like people were beaten there and that the red stuff that he had seen on the floor earlier when he was taken in there was, in fact, blood. So this man was kidnapped, taken hostage, and the officers threatened to inject him with heroin so he would talk and basically fess up to whatever drug uh, charges that they were looking for and were unable to do so. Now we know that a man, his name is John Hubbard, was allegedly held there, and he died from an accidental heroin overdose. Now, knowing how they treat people there, that seems like that'd be impossible for him to shoot up while he was being held there because all the people that have been there thus far have been shackled with their hands there, and I doubt these guys aren't going through the pockets and checking. Now that we know that these guys are threatening people to inject them with heroin to get them to fess up to stuff, leads to the fact that maybe this guy was murdered at Home and Square by these... uh, undercover agents who are going around kidnapping people on the streets. So there's many questions that don't add up, and it just doesn't make sense that he could have accidentally taken it. Anyone who takes heroin almost instantaneously dies if they have an overdose. I mean, he could have taken them in capsule form and swallowed, but still, once it hit his stomach, that would have all happened instantaneously, and if he were to shoot up, it would have had to happen right there on the scene. So I doubt there's any way that this man would have when it would have been able to in any kind of way sneak in a needle with heroin in it already, uh, you know, in the syringe and then essentially while he's sitting there shoot up. So there's definitely some shady stuff going on. We're going to have to do a lot more digging and, you know, it leads us to think there's probably going to be a lot more of these sites that come to light that we find out about. So stay tuned for more reports at infowars.com. I'm Joe Biggs. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1 888 253 3139. 
Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Well, joining me now in studio is Rob Dew and Joe Biggs, and we are going to break down the wild and wacky world of science and technology today. Now, our top story, uh, it's a developing effort in the United States to turn the organs of aborted babies into a commodity. Now, Rob, you've got a, an in-depth report about this coming up here after this segment, yeah. but this is something called the Genetic Literacy Project. They term this xenotransplantation. The process is being developed by the California company uh, Ganogen. They remove the organs from aborted babies, transplant them into a rat or a pig, and then this allows them to grow so then they can be transplanted into a human. And they sell this because they say the biggest question should be, would you accept an organ from a pig or a cow or a baboon just to save your child's life or your own? And they have some pretty compelling statistics for this. They say uh, every year 123,000 Americans require an organ transplant. Fewer than 30,000 will get one. This leaves 21 people to die each and every day waiting for an organ transplant. So this is when they take the what tissue and they grow it on the back of the, uh, the, the rat or the pig or whatever, mm -hmm. and then they remove that they and add it on? It for Future use. But they get the tissue from aborted babies. So they're literally harvesting dead children to extend life is mm -hmm. what they're proposing they do this. Right. And and I think you're gonna see companies like this get picked up through Google's venture capital firms called Google Ventures, and they have about four hundred million dollars a year that they spread between their two hundred and eighty so, or some odd companies. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're gonna see is uh Google Ventures investing in companies like Ganogen to then what else can you do to extend life? How can we harvest this unused genetic material is what they're referring to it as. They don't call it dead babies. Right. Um, and it's disgusting. It's really, it's repugnant. And what you're going to create is an incentive for more abortions. Exactly. And of course, we saw these fe aborted fetuses being used as a commodity when we learned that they were heating hospitals with aborted babies because they're, <laughs> they're just like the ultimate life force. So now they're taking their organs and l telling all these women, oh, it's okay, go out and get an abortion. That's your right to do that. And then we'll just we'll just do away with the remains. Don't you Are worry about Are they going to use it. these post-birth abortions as well in this kind of activity? I mean, could they use, they could use anybody's. I, I mean, mean, it's a more it, developed I mean, organ I think, at that point. Exactly. I, I think, you know, a three-year-old, hey, we've got through now anybody that, that gets killed. And, and, th and this goes back to these organ donor programs that they have. And there's, you talk to any medical doctor and they, none of them get on the organ donor program. Yeah. It's because they know if they see that on your license, then they, they may, they have a, a question they ask themselves, well, how much could I get for all these organs? What organs are intact? They start thinking of you as a commodity, mm -hmm. not as a person they're trying to save. They start going, well, I could save 10 other people with this one person's organs. So maybe I should do that for the greater good because it's always for the greater good. That's why we need to take aborted babies. Yeah. It's for the greater good. Yeah. And, and it's not like if I wanted to donate a kidney or something and maybe pay off some of my school tuition, I couldn't do that. I could be arrested for trying to, you know, get a little compensation for one of my organs. But meanwhile, a doctor or the hospital, they can get up to $400,000 for a kidney transplant. And the doctor pockets all that. So they get to, money off that's your That's scary organs. to know that you could be in a car wreck and then the paramedics are out there working on you, trying to revive you to bring you back. 
And those are the thoughts that are going through their mind. Just to get exactly. you back in time so they can ice down your yeah, organs that, that, and that's, climb across the country. Exactly. That's chilling. Yeah, to just keep you, keep you alive just for that. But, but what about stem cell research? Because I'm personally, I'm not against it. Obviously, there's some ethical things there. But a lot of people were against stem, stem cell research because of the ethics. So why would they think that this would be something better, more easily digestible to the people who are very against stem cell research? Now they're going to take aborted fetuses, put their organs Soil in the animals. 